Hi, my name is Katie Udy. I My advisor is Dr. Carol Dabney Smith. My research is in the mitochondrial TAT import analysis. All right, so we work with plants, um, and we work, I specifically work with mitochondria, which is like the powerhouse of the cell. So it makes all the energy um, for the cell, for the organism, such as us, or such as for plants. Um, now, the mitochondria is only a compartment in the cell. It, there's other compartments, such as the chloroplast, which helps gather energy from sunlight and plants. Um, and these compartments use these molecules called proteins to help them do their jobs. Without proteins, none of this would get done. Now, these proteins are typically not actually made in the compartments, such as mitochondria or the chloroplast. They're made elsewhere and then have to come into those compartments. Now, to come into those compartments, they actually have to be recognized with a specific key code because those compartments don't want to just let anything get across their membranes um, because it could be a harmful protein from bacteria or a virus. So they want to be recognized. They want to recognize their proteins that they want in there through something specific like the key code. And once that key code is recognized by the transport system that's made out of other proteins, it can come in through that membrane and go into that compartment to do its job. It's, and again, it's like an access code to a door. You have the right access code, you can gain entry to the door. So one of the protein systems that does this kind of transport across membranes in chloroplast is called a TAT system. And it's actually recently been discovered also in the mitochondria. Um, so in the mitochondria, the TAT system is made out of two proteins that we know of so far, MTTAT-C, which is actually made in, in, in the mitochondria, so it doesn't have to get in, which is nice, but it's also made out of MTTAT-B, which is made elsewhere and does have to be recognized at the mitochondria's out, outer membrane by another transport system through some kind of recognition code, key code, be recognized and be brought in and join up with MTTAT-C so it can do its own job in the TAT system of um, bringing proteins across a membrane. And we're interested in how this actually happens. How is MTTAT-B recognized? So we wanted to change parts of its sequence to see, okay, so which parts of the sequence are the key code, the essential key code for it to come in? Such as if we change MLGL to MNGN in that protein of MTTAT-B, does it stop it from getting into the pro into the mitochondria? So then we would know that that L, those Ls there are important for the key code for entry into the mitochondria. So we can do this scheme um, by comparing wild type and an altered protein that we've changed parts of, introduce them to mitochondria with all the conditions right. If they can get across that membrane or import then they should be getting into that mem that my the through the membrane and into the mitochondria, and then we wash away anything that hasn't gotten in, into the mitochondria, and we can visualize whatever empty tap B or whatever altered empty tap B is left as a black band on film, and the stronger this black band is, the more intense, the more that it got into the mitochondria, the better, the more efficiently it got into the mitochondria. Whereas if it's a faint band in the altered proteins, that means that we decrease the efficiency of, of that MTTAP-B import. Or if it's not there at all, we've, can't, we've prevented that MTTAP-B from importing at all. So whatever we changed was vital or critical for the MTTAP-B import. First, though, we wanted to be sure that MTTAP-B wild type does import into the mitochondria because we are starting the study fresh in our lab based off other lab's results. So there's lots of bands on this film. The only ones you need to focus on are the two of marked with stars. The leftmost one is just MTTAP-B, wild type, no mitochondria introduced. And then to the right of that is after I've introduced it to mitochondria and washed away anything that hasn't gotten into the mitochondria yet. Two, five, 10, and then um, 20 minutes just seeing how over time much how much empty tappy accumulates in the mitochondria. And you can see by that rightmost band, that's if in 20 minutes of import, there's quite a bit of empty tappy that's gotten into the mitochondria and it hasn't washed away. 
Um, so we know that it is in the mitochondria and it's importing into the mitochondria. And now that we have confirmed that wild type of TTAP B does import into the mitochondria, we can start altering it, seeing if that affects its importance in mitochondria. So before you can make protein, you had to make DNA. Um, so DNA makes protein. So we start off altering the DNA to then alter the protein. Um, but you want to only alter the DNA in ways that you want to alter it and not in unexpected ways. So you need to look at the sequences once you're done altering it and compare it to wild type and make sure that that one change you wanted to make is the only change made. And in this example, that G to a T change was made and nothing else was changed. Um, so that's what we wanted. You can confirm that with all our sequences so we can move on and use those altered DNA to make altered protein. The leftmost band is wild type MTTAP-B and then to the right are the alterations. And interestingly, some of these didn't make as much protein as the wild type. So before we do imports with them, we'll have to equalize the amounts given to the mitochondria so we can compare the end results of how much got in better. Um, but I've gone ahead and the one that's on the kind of in the middle here that's as intense as the wild type or almost as intense. I've done imports with that and the wild type to compare. It's incubating on film right now. So we're waiting on that. It takes a week. Um, so we'll, once that's done, we'll verify the results with two repetitions. We'll equalize the amounts of proteins introduced to the mitochondria with the others and do those imports. And then future work, we'll identify which protein system recognizes and imports MTTAP-B. Thank you for your time.